Okay, so recently I've been getting some messages from some folks saying that they flashed Betaflight, uh, newer version 405, to the Turbo B 136RS or the 120RS V2, and they're saying that, oh, now uh, my Betaflight configuration is totally hosed, I have no UARTs, I can't configure the board, I'm getting a missing gyro arrow, error, error, etc., etc., and the reason why this is happening is there's a new sort of system coming through now. It's not really, I guess it's supposed to be formally introduced in Betaflight 4.1, but they're kind of rolling things out already in the later stages of 4.0, and it has to do with this thing called um, Unified Targets. Uh, I'll put this link to this page down in the description. You guys can read this. It's kind of, it's kind of technical, but basically they're trying to simplify the way they, they can sort of... Um, consolidate all these targets because there's so many targets in Betaflight Configurator now and makes it easier for the Betaflight devs and for the manufacturers. And it turns out that iFlight is one of the first manufacturers to start utilizing this new methodology of rolling out new Betaflight targets and I think this is starting to affect some people. The, I don't think anyone's made any videos about uh, the issues with the iFlight um, stacks. Now, all their new recent stacks here, um, you can see on their page, all use this new methodology. They're using the F, uh, or see, STM32, um, F411, and also the F7 variants. And I'll show you that here in a second in Betaflight Configurator in all of their new stacks, which of course are going into all of their new um, bind and fly drones. So it's, it's affecting the 136RS and the 120 RS V2, and I'm sure it's affecting some other ones that I'm not aware of yet. I'm sure I'm getting, getting plenty of messages about those, but this is the way you, you should properly update your beta flight so you don't run into these problems. First off, um, uh, if you go to, like, for example, to the product page for the 136RS, if you scroll down, it will tell you what stack it's using here, and it's using the uh, Success Micro 16x16 16 16 stack. If you click on that link, it'll bring up this page here. And this is the uh, page for the stack that's in that model. And this is the 16 by 16 stack here. It's the new one with the plugs. And on this page, you can see here under, under downloads, you have these various downloads here. You have the config file. You have a hex file for Betaflight 357, a hex file for uh, Betaflight 404, and you have a user manual. Now, you can if you have um, basically flashed your stack, your, your flight controller with a newer version of Betaflight, say 404, 405, and you did not do a CLI dump, then you will have to get this config file here to restore those UARTs because basically the, the way the Unified Targets things works is it um, saves all those resources as a separate config file, and those are going to vary by manufacturer. So every board is going to have a different config file. That's how they're doing this consolidation. So if you download this file, it says, um, this config file is a Word document. It will pop up like this, and this is what it'll look like. And this is the stuff that you'll have to paste back in. These are basically the resources uh, for the, the motors, the UARTs, et cetera, et cetera. It's, all, it's basically just gonna copy the whole thing and then paste that into the CLA, and I'll show you how to do that if, in, if you did not do a CLA dump earlier. But if you are seeing this video for the first time and you haven't done the flash and don't have this problem yet, this is the way you should properly um, update your beta flight on those stacks or any of these flight controllers from other manufacturers that are using this STM32 um, F4, F7 uh, unified targets methodology. So I'll go ahead and I'll bring up uh, beta flight configurator here and uh, let's just go to the welcome page and then I'm going to plug in the, this is the 136RS. And COM port comes up, and we'll go ahead and connect to it. And you can see over here on the upper left, uh, upper right, I'm sorry, upper left, um, Betaflight 402 is the current version on here, and it's using this targets called EXF slash EXF411 Pro, and in parentheses STM32 F411. So the thing that you want to be focused on is this, the STM32 F411. That's the actual target you're going to select in the firmware flasher, but you can also double check this in the CLI. You go here, and if you type in version, it will also show you here STM32 F411. That is the target that is on here. 
Um, so let's just go ahead and clear this output history, get rid of all this stuff, and then let's do a dump all. You want to make sure you save this, everything that you get out of this. So dump all and hit enter. And then you want to save this file somewhere. And I have a folder for a bunch of CLI dumps here, and this will be 136Rs for the full dump. I help save. You want to make sure you save this because you're going to basically put all the stuff back into uh, the CLI after you've done the flashing. So uh, make sure you do that. And um, if you have flash and you did not do this, then you're going to have to download that config file from the download page uh, on the product page for the stack, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so now that we have uh, saved our CLI dump, we can go into the firmware flasher. So we can just hit update firmware over here. And we'll have to wait for the board to reboot. Okay, and then here we're just going to select the correct target, which in this case is STM32F411, uh, right here. And you can see there's other ones here that are going to be kind of similar. So uh, if you have a different, slightly different board that's using the unified targets methodology, then you're going to want to select the correct one for your board, as I mentioned earlier. So we're going to select STM32F411, and I think the latest version is, F, is uh, 405. Do a full chip erase. We go ahead and load the firmware. This is just the same as you would normally flash uh, any any uh, other targeted beta flight. That's some information here about uh, the uh, updates that occurred in four or five. This is pretty generic here. I don't think there's anything specific to this particular. This is basically a generic target is what we have here. And then we'll go ahead and hit flash, and we'll wait for that to finish. Now, if you're having issues with um, getting your board into DFU mode, you might have to press the bootloader button. Or if you have issues with your USB drivers, I do have another video on how you can do a USB driver fixer. Uh, I'll put a link to that video down in the description. Okay, so when we rebooted, so we can go ahead and connect back to the board. And this is what I want to show you. If you go into the ports section here, we have absolutely no UARTs because we have not put that CLI dump back in here with those settings. And this is the problem that people are running into. They're, they flash their board, they're like, help, my board's totally hosed, I can't use it. And this is what they're seeing here because uh, this is just a generic target and it doesn't have the complete information on what the board needs in order to be able to be functional. So now, basically now at this point, we'll go ahead back into the CLI and we're going to copy and paste the stuff that we dumped earlier into here. Okay, so we'll open up the file and just do a select all and do a copy and then go back into the CLI here and then hit control V paste hit enter and that will dump everything back in that is missing. Now if uh, you didn't do the dump of course then just copy the stuff from that config file from the download page as I mentioned earlier um, that will get you back pretty much all the same stuff. This, this is actually a lot of extra stuff because this is already in there. Um, it's just that this is just from the dump from the older version. It, it don't actually need everything here, but uh, it's just better to put it all in instead of just <laughs> trying to figure out what you need and what you don't need. Okay, so that should do a save and then I'll do a reboot. All right, so if we do this correctly, go ahead and connect in here and we should now have our UARTs back. So and all the settings that we had before that when we were previously on four i think it was 402 we should have all those same settings including the pids yeah the pids are here and all, all of our configuration settings for before everything should just go right back in and really i don't think you, you probably should double check make sure everything is kind of things kind of weird um obviously you want to make sure your receiver is working properly and everything like that but for the most part, everything should be in there. Um, it's a pretty minor upgrade from 402 to 405, but now that you have the proper settings from the CLI dump, you should be able to see everything and everything should be functional. Um, this is gonna be basically applicable to most boards going forward, especially anything new that's coming up because that, uh, the Betaflight devs are pushing everyone towards, you know, as, they, as everyone goes to 4.1, uh, this is the way things are gonna be done. So. You want to make sure that whenever you get a board that has uh, the STM32XXX after it, um, that you realize it's a generic target and that you need to do the CLA dump to capture all your settings before you do the Betaflight upgrade. Otherwise, you're going to have to go hunt for a config file from the manufacturer or from somewhere else 
that has the proper resources uh, for your flight controller to know how to be become functional. Anyway, guys, so I hope that it helps you guys out and solves a problem for you in terms of like, getting your flight controller working again. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.